fuck is wrong with Oh, I, he- I hear you now. Oh, you hear me swear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Fortnightly Astrology with Craig Simpson and Fiona Edgar. Um, for Fiona, you go to FionaEdgar.com, F-I-O-N-A-A-E-D-G-A-R.com. For me, it's easy, RadiantCritters.com. You'll find everything there. And um, uh, Fiona, of course, has a very, very active uh, chat. Maybe I won't mention the platform on on YouTube. It's, it's Telegram. Telegram. Okay. <laughs> so Telegram. Very, very active Telegram uh, because she uh, makes a, a voice message or so every day for people. And, uh, you know, you really get a, a great insight. You really can follow along. And she shares, you know, the fact that it's free is quite startling. So, I mean, it, it's great stuff. So hop on there before she charge for, charges for it <laughs> and enjoy that. So... Well, Fiona, it is, God, what, what is it? It is August 20th, where it's insane. Uh, this year has gone by so fast. And, uh, but well, here we are looking at this fortnight. So how you doing, Fiona? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm a little tired. I mean, I've noticed uh, other people saying that they have been feeling very drained and tired recently. Not sure if that's you know, the same for you guys over in the States or whether it's just people here? I think it's everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wonder what's going on with that then. Yeah. Because there's people. So at my gym where we work out the, uh, well, my my crowd studio, my crowd, my studio, um, the the last week, the instructors have been just pissed at everybody because everybody's like asleep, you know, now I myself, uh, I'm very deliberate about it. I make sure I drink some a strong ass energy drink or so before, you know, something natural, organic and good for me that I put together myself. It's not, I'm not doing Red Bull or Monster. Okay. Um, but like, I make sure that I show up and when I'm there, I'm totally amped, but I do that somewhat chemically, I will admit sometimes, but I'm always kind of with it. But people are like, we're punching each other in the head. We're falling over. Literally, people have been lethargic um, for the last week. And I'm hoping that it it just lasts a week, but yeah, um, you know, and myself, I'm always, I don't, I, I have trouble sleeping, so I'm always in, in some weird ass state anyway, so. Mm, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what's going on astrologically. I mean, we have got Neptune retrograde, so Neptune is, uh, you know, it's a heavy planet. It's yeah. watery, uh, especially when it's in Pisces. So that will make people kind of feel a bit drained more so than usual. Jupiter, of course, is out of Pisces now and it's in Aquarius. So we can't blame him anymore. But also something quite significant is happening today. So Uranus is actually stationing uh, to turn retrograde. And that can make us feel a little bit wonky. Oh, wow. So Uranus is stationing, getting ready to go retrograde. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. The planet of, well, I know that people in general associate that with Aquarian energy, don't they? Or Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the fact that it's in Taurus. So Taurus is a physical sign. You know, it's connected to the earth that we walk on, physical things like our bodies, the way that we move. And Taurus is a bit of a sluggish sign. Taurians don't, I mean, obviously this is quite general, but a lot of Taurians, they don't like to really exert themselves that much when it comes to, you know, exercise. They like their comfort zone. So maybe it has got something to do with that. Astrologically, I mean, I'm going to go over the fortnight astrology here in, in a moment, but astrologically, I'm not really seeing anything immediate that other than what I just talked about. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Well, that's why something Uranus uh, stationing to go retrograde in Taurus. That's kind of like, you know, wow, interesting energies to to intermingle, you know, because uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Taurus is really like, you know, you will take the color of the drapes we're going to get seriously. Then like the Aquarian is like, you know, I don't know, he's uh, looking at squirrel videos or something like that i don't know it's just one of these things it's <laughs> very very different energies <laughs> yeah yeah well we've got we've actually got a lot going on today so i'll just start talking yes. about that 20th so, okay yeah today 20th of august the sun is opposite jupiter 
So this isn't really a, a bad um, aspect at all. It's quite good. It can bring in joyous feelings. It, it can mean that you're having a lovely Jupiterian exchange with another person. Uh, that, that energy is passing now. So we had that very late uh, last night. Uh, Uranus retrograde. So basically everything that I just spoke about. And when a planet goes retrograde, so what it's trying to do is to make us to make changes that are going to be helpful to us. So with Uranus, it's about freedom. Uranus wants us to be free. So he's going to go backwards for a while so that we can redo some stuff, make some changes and increase our own happiness and freedom. So we'll be seeing, you know, you'll probably notice changes in other people. But when a planet goes retrograde, it becomes more internalized. So we'll be thinking about it a lot, a lot rather than really seeing it in the external world. Also today, we had a beautiful trine from Mercury and Uranus. Mercury is the planet of communication, thought processes, the way that you think, the, the way that you absorb information. And trine Uranus, it can, you know, it can bring a breakthrough. You can get some new information from someone that helps you or just a different way of looking at something or thinking. So tomorrow, it's a nice day. Venus is trying the North Node. So Venus is very happy at the moment. She's basking in her, uh, the beautiful energy of Libra. And it's really good for relationships. It's also going to be good for anything like podcasting, writing, interactions with females, that type of thing. So that's tomorrow. Then on August 22nd, Mars is trying Uranus. Mars is the planet of your physical energy levels so we should hopefully feel a little bit better on the 20 seconds and not like we're walking through quicksand um so when mars trines uranus we can have a little bit of a health breakthrough just feeling better you may decide to do something daring on that day that you wouldn't normally do i don't know ride a motorbike go skydiving or simply just take a different route on the way home. That's kind of up to you. But it's also a good day to get some work done because Mars and Uranus are both in Earth signs. So also on the 22nd, we have a beautiful full moon in Aquarius. So Craig, this is your full moon. Yeah. Uh, it's a really well aspected full moon because it's conjunct Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, is known as the great benefic. He brings us uh, happiness, joy, abundance. So with Aquarius, it's going to be connected with your freedom, your friends, your identity within the group. But it's quite well aspected, so it should be good for everyone. So also on the same day, got a lot going on on the 22nd. The sun starts to journey through the sign of Virgo. So when the sun was in Leo, we were kind of more extroverted, we were more outgoing, more focused on maybe ourselves and more focused with kids, with families. Um, when the sun transits Virgo, it's time to do some kind of cleaning in terms of your health, your home, because we're starting to get ready for the fall season and the winter season. So it's a good time to do a detox uh, it's a good time to rid yourself of any bad habits. Just go, ever, go through everything with a fine tooth comb. Virgo is really analytical. Some people fast, you know, if your health can benefit from that, then uh, go ahead. So on August uh, 23rd, Venus is in, trying to Saturn. This is good for relationships. They become more stable. On the 25th, Mercury is opposite Neptune. This can be a weird day for communications. By the way, speaking of communication, if you hear an incessant meowing in the background, it's my cat. <laughs> mm. He wants to join in. He's got Venus and Leo, so he, yeah. feels, le he feels left out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Leo's a showman. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He really is. <laughs> okay, so August... 25th, Mercury opposite Neptune. Like I say, 
this can be a day of miscommunication because Neptune makes things weird. So try and have conversations in person rather than over text. But the positive side of Neptune is that it can make uh, your life feel, you know, just a bit rosy, a bit beautiful. It's a good day for any kind of spiritual work. So as we move on to the 26th of August, Venus is opposite Chiron. This can be a little bit of a tricky day for relationships because Venus wants to be romantic and together and beautiful. But Chiron is having her address some type of wound, which never is a pleasant thing. But on that day, you can have a breakthrough in terms of how you approach relationships, how you stop your wounds from interfering with those relationships. So also on the 26th, we've got a trine between Mercury and Pluto. This is really beautiful. You can have some intense conversations. You can have breakthroughs in the way that you think, your behavior. Someone may tell you a secret or something that causes you to become more intimate with them. On the 28th of August, Venus is making a quincunx to Uranus. So a quincunx is a difficult aspect, although it is a minor one. This uh, aspect really is going to make us address some kind of issues within relationships connected with your personal freedom. Um, so on the next day, August 29th, the sun is in square to the north node. You could have issues with your uh, husband, partner, boyfriend, the man in your life, it could be your dad, your son, or even your boss, or it can just be an issue that you have with your own ego. It's the sun in Virgo square, the north node in Gemini. So you may be feeling that it's super difficult for you to concentrate on this day because of all of that mutable energy. So as we go to August 30th, Mercury enters Libra. Mercury loves being in Libra. Uh, our words become more beautiful. It's easier to write. It's a nice energy. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So as we move on to September 2nd, Mars is in opposition to Neptune. This is going to make it hard to get anything done. You will just not know where to start with your tasks, your daily tasks that you have to do. Any activity involving water will really benefit you. Go swimming, take a bath or do some spiritual work. September 3rd, Mercury is in trying to the North Node. The North Node is like a signpost in the sky that says, go here. So there's a conversation that you need to have. Maybe it's a podcast that you need to make, but it's a good aspect, so it should go well for you. Then on the 4th, we have a couple of inconjuncts. Inconjuncts really, or, or quincunxes, are discomfort. You know, it's a situation that doesn't really feel comfortable to me. How can I fix it? The first one is Venus and Neptune. So Venus is um, quite active over this fortnight. So she, um, she wants to be romantic and maybe dissolve in some kind of union with another person. But she needs to check herself. And she needs to make sure that her feet are, both, are firmly on the ground before she um, makes any bad decisions. So the next in conjunct that we have, it's the sun and Chiron. That's also on the same day. That can just be some kind of situation that causes discomfort because it triggers some kind of wound. On September 5th, Mercury is trying Saturn. Good day to make excellent decisions because you will be thinking clearly. The wisdom of Saturn is going to be on your side. On September 6th, wow, we've got three things going on. Venus is in square to Pluto, so this is really intense when it comes to relationships, passionate, Plutonian. Uh, Mars is in trying to Pluto. Your sex life should be going well that day. There's like a strong feeling of intimacy between you and the, another person, and Venus is in trying to Jupiter. So if you want to take someone out on a date, take them, take them on this um, on September 6th because it's a really good day for relationships. So I'm gonna end this on September 7th and we actually have a new moon in Virgo. So you can start your 
diet then, start your exercise plan, clean your home, tidy your wardrobe, and um, just kind of plan for the winter. Start to make your plans, stock up on food and anything else that you need to do. Wow, well, that was definitely thorough. So, all right, well, I will wait for September 6th. No, I'm sorry, September 5th to make good, clear decisions. And uh, September 6th is date night. So, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> so I'd say, especially ladies, if some guy's interested in you, say, okay, I think I'll be free September 6th. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and if you make him wait, it'll just drive him crazy. He'll be like, wow, her social schedule is so full. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, works a charm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then kick him out of the house September 7th so you can clean up because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know oh my goodness well i like the idea that uranus uh retrograde kind of gets into it, it, internal freedom i like that because um mm -hmm. we're all dealing with you know a lack of freedom these days a lot of mass psychosis out there so maybe uranus that planet of lightning bolts and insight and such like that will uh i don't know maybe this will be a um Maybe I'm just guessing here. Uh, maybe this will be a good time for people to possibly shake out of the uh, mass psychosis a little bit because we certainly have mass psychosis going on in the world today. And yeah. uh, I don't have to be specific on YouTube because you all know how it is, but you know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> uh, maybe we'll see people, I don't know, start to like, you know, break out of that zombification, at least a few. I, 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 it feels good to know that at least the energy maybe is heading towards that way. People beginning to have a concept of internal freedom. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. And I think we need to remember that we can, you know, we can free ourselves because yeah. it's, a, it's a state of mind. You know, it really is. There's nothing that makes you a slave more than being glued to all of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, more and more, I, I find, you know, people taking, uh, well, I wouldn't call it like news fasting, but just sort of uh, people seem to be realizing that, you know, you're, you're here for you, really. And you're here for your own growth. You're here for your own, you know, whatever one's spiritual concept of, of uh, acceleration is of, of deepening wisdom of experiences. I mean, that's why you are here. And so, you know, you don't want to uh, stop doing that. Because, I mean, that's a signal that they're putting out there. Hey, everybody, just just be stuck in fear and shut yourself down. You know, mm -hmm. care about things that don't really matter. You know, empires have risen and fallen over and over and over again. It's just part of the cyclical nature of the planet of the way things go. And so, you know, uh, regardless of what crazy crap is going on out there, you know, your purpose is your purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, don't get distracted. I think that's one of the now nah, that's one of the huge things is that, uh, you know, you, you don't owe the world nothing. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's see what kind of what kind of look at the future are we going to be doing? We are going to be doing both. I decided Whoa. to, all to right. spoil you all again. Yes. I'm feeling very generous. Yeah. So the cards look good, actually. I like these cards. So first of all, we've got the three of wands. And the three of wands really is about uh, someone waiting for their ships to come in. So they've made, a, they've made an investment. Um, you know, they're, they're looking into the future at what they want. But it is, it is coming, but it, they haven't quite got it yet. So the second card that I got was the seven of wands. So whoever this is, I mean, probably it's for all of us, but there's always a few people that really, you know, they resonate with this more than, than others. But the seven of wands can be about being defensive, keeping away uh, just a bunch of annoying shit that's trying to derail you from your goal. But um, the last card is the world. The world is probably one of the best cards in the whole deck. It's about the completion of a cycle. So this can be, you know, for all of us, or it can be for some individuals, you know, that are listening to this. But if someone has a plan, 
Uh, and the thing is that the cards show travel. That's what I see in these cards. It's also reflected in the astrology because we have the full moon that's conjunct Jupiter. So Jupiter is the planet of, of travel, of foreign cultures. Also, the rune that I picked is also connected to travel, but I'll get to that in a second. If someone has a dream out there, they want to move, they want to take a journey. So it could be that they're going to move countries, or it could also be that they're going to move jobs, location, anything like that. They're going to get it. So right now, they're still kind of beating off things that are trying to, to you know, take them away from this path. But the world promises that this cycle is going to end in a really good way. So I'm very happy to say that. I mean, the, ast the astrology for the, the next few weeks looks okay as well. So this could be a good fortnight. So finally, the rune. And I put the rune more for spiritual guidance. Because the runes really go so deep. And the one that I pulled is called Rido. And it really is about a journey. It's about a vehicle. Uh, it's about someone that is moving along on their path. Uh, their journey is the destination. So whatever this is, this situation is destined for this person. Mm -hmm. So they don't actually have to worry about it because the fate, you know, the fates, the norms, whatever you want to call it is, is in control here. And no matter how many small obstacles appear on this path, this person is going to breeze right past those and get to where they're destined for in the end. So, I mean, this rune is also about, it can be about justice. Maybe someone's having legal issues, but it's also really about, you know, a journey of the self. How far have you come, you know, since last year? I feel like I've, I've lived another lifetime since 2020. And I don't mean just because of all of the spiritual stuff or, you know, all of the virus stuff, but I really feel like a different person um, in a much better way. I actually feel a lot stronger, even though it was, it's been very scary and we still don't know what the outcome really is going to be. I just feel like it's like an initiation process. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, and that's something I've contemplated, you know, recently is just uh, how we really need to uh, focus on our intuition, like whatever. Um, I think the survival instinct that will help one uh, prosper and do okay in this time of while well, we don't know what the outcome is going to be really is uh, the cultivation of intuition. Like, I think most people listening, you undoubtedly have intuition, I'm sure. And there's like many, many methods, uh, but it is, you've got a spiritual technology ultimately. And so since it is real, it's, it, it's you know, you, you can tune your hearing, you can tune your vision, you can, um, but I think also just the same as a physical sense, you can tune your intuition, you know? And so whatever it is, whatever practice works for a person and they, they might have to find it, you know? But uh, uh, tuning your intuition might be one of the best things I think a person can do right now, just because mm -hmm. that gives you the advantage. That way, we may not know what the outcome is going to be. We don't know what the next year looks like or the next whatever. I mean, if you look outside the window, all is craziness. So if you look out there, like you're just going to be like, yeah, yeah, this sucks. So I mean, <laughs> <they're> just, <laughs> <laughs> there's no good news and if you find it please send it to me really um so basically <laughs> <laughs> but you know there really is uh i think our intuition as we cultivate that and it's that time and i think it's the right energies on the planet for it for those that are able who have intuition work on cultivating it more and more because that way you'll always be a step ahead and you'll always be kind of what's next and you'll be prospering. And I really think in the next couple of years, as we're going through a lot of change, um, you know, we're kind of living in a time of like, you could say the globalists have, they're making their move. You know, it's so funny. People talk about the deep state and it's always been hidden. That's the idea. It's deep. You don't see it, but that submarine of the deep state has to surface once in a while. So once in a while, they kind of see it, but I think it's, I think somehow it's been, it's been forced to surface and it can't dive. 
So everybody's seeing it. They're not really denying it anymore. They're going, oh yeah, that's right. We're evil and we're doing this, you know? <laughs> it's not behind the scenes. They're not even working through world leaders anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just crazy. So if, you, if, if people don't want to be scared and they want to be empowered and they want to keep thriving and living uh, and be out of town when the Gestapo shows up, basically your intuition is it. That That is our greatest uh, thing that we can cultivate that will give us the most power. I really think so. I think so. I think so too. And also activating the warrior. Yes. You know, because my like the gods that I work with, because I'm a, you know, a Nordic pagan, they're gods of war. Mm. And they, you know, they, when you have that active in you and you're working with them, you start to take on those qualities and uh, you start to become stronger. Oh, you definitely and, do. Yeah. Less fearful of everything that's going on. Yeah. Like whatever, how, I don't, I shouldn't say, that. I don't mean the word whatever. I mean, like, like whatever method, you know, a person uses for sure, because, uh, and you definitely got one. And I, I believe I have methods myself, but it may be something people haven't really thought of, you know, cultivating the warrior and uh, whether it's a, you know, a Thor hammer, you know, that you're wearing around your neck or whether it's uh, taking a martial art or both or whatever it might happen to be for an individual. I don't know, eating like more red meat and grilling it yourself, like whatever, whatever awake, <laughs> whatever awake, <laughs> whatever awake and see inner warrior, you know, um, you know, one should do it because, uh, you know, like one thing that helps me, like my inner warrior, and I guess the outer warrior too, is just, uh, I do have some Germanic roots, I do, and, uh, you know, you look at the Germanic, uh, you know, mythology, uh, and uh, I love just the entire notion of so much of it, it's like, peace is hell, Ugh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so, so just kind of start that would be a great you know that'd be a great t-shirt just peace as hell <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh gosh yeah who wants it it's boring uh you know yeah i don't think any of us are ever going to have it on this planet anyway yeah. so it's like a it's a fantasy to think that we can have that but you know, when situations call for us to be brave and strong and just like man the fuck up, yeah. then we need we need to be ready to do that. But so many people, they're just not prepared for that. Or they think that if they send love and light uh, to a situation that it's going to change it. And it just isn't, you know, you need to fight it. Oh, instead yeah. of, you know, I mean, don't get me started on the new age stuff. You, you know how I feel about that, but really it doesn't help anyone at all they're disempowering themselves um you know if they just connected with that uh you know their roots the, the you know their polytheistic gods because they're going to be gods of war in every pantheon uh for a reason it doesn't mean that you're going to go you know turn really violent or anything like that it just means that it really gives you some backbone Oh, it definitely does. Yeah, it definitely does. So everybody, you know, don't, don't despair. There's still plenty of time for glory. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, don't despair out there. There's, you know, you, you'll get your chance soon. I guarantee it. So I mean, mm. there you go. You know. Wow. Well, let's see. Is there anything else that we got going on? Um, no, I don't think so. Not at the moment. I mean, should be should be a pretty pretty good fortnight. Yeah. Well, everybody definitely check out uh, Fiona's Telegram because she does mention all the things that she's doing. Um, she's got some new podcasts that she's a part of right now, and uh, so she's just really you know putting out the content, and that that's quite a lot of work. So, um, you know, definitely check yeah. that out. Yeah, I'm actually interviewing David Whitehead tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be super fun. I'm going to be talking about his chart with him and asking him some questions as well. Oh yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great. Yeah, he's quite a good character. He in, in um, 
Yeah, I, I listened to his show too, and he's introduced me into a lot. I never, I never talked to him, but I mean, his show has introduced me to a lot of a lot of things that I've definitely, you know, kept followed up on. So, yeah, great show. That's going to be quite the uh, quite the good experience. And that's not your first time talking with him, of course. You guys have, have hung out a good number of times. Yeah, we've worked together a lot. I mean, I've been on on Slaved with him and Michael, you know, qu- quite a lot of times. But he's just, you know, he's a good guy. He's, a, yeah. he's an all around good person like yourself, Craig. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he definitely eats a lot of red meat and makes his own yogurt also. So, I mean. You know. <laughs> 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 you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. Well, I will get this posted as always, and I will send you a link. And hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. This is always a lot of fun. I hope that we, uh, you know, hope, hope you on us info has been great it certainly certainly sounds good to me sounds great to me we're gonna have a great fortnight and uh, remember peace is hell there's still plenty of chance for glory it's not over yet and uh, we'll see you in a fortnight (laughs) see you then bye bye